Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at rate chasing and the reason that you should not be doing it at all and how they are going to affect you. Are you effectively losing money out by chasing rates? So interest rates have hit rock bottom during the pandemic in 2020. We've seen them at a 0.25 at the Fed's fund rate, literally rock bottom, pretty much as low as they possibly can go. When we got into 2021, the rate started going up. 22, we seen more rate increases into 23. Now we have seen an incredible amount of rate increases faster than we ever have in history. That is right, guys. Now the raising rate, rate environment um, makes mortgages more expensive, auto loans more expensive, but a lot, a lot of people do not think about the flip side. So the flip side of that is the benefit that you can get out of CDs, out of savings accounts. Um, everyday consumers can really benefit from banks and financial institutions now offering higher rates on deposit products. So as rates do continue to increase, not only does it go up on the interest side when it comes to borrowing, but in addition, it does go up much higher when it comes onto the savings side. So for the last couple of years, the savers have really been penalized when you look at it big picture, when it came to um, keeping money within a financial institution, it was not very prevalent. A lot of people put them into annuities, put them into stocks and bonds, things of that nature, because the market or the financial institutions were not paying anything. Well, now what has happened as, as the um, rates have continued to increase, a lot of people have pulled money out of the volatility of the stock market, moved it into high interest, no risk savings, money market accounts, and we have seen an incredible amount of CDs. Now, there is an entire subset of people within this kind of demographic um, that are very eager to move their money around from different bank to bank, chasing CD rates, chase, chasing some of the savings rates. They are known as rate chasers. However, when it boils down, trying to squeeze every penny of interest out of what you got is not really worth it. Um, the time and effort that it takes to do that is very costly. That is the reason, similar to me guys, high yield savings accounts are where I'm putting my money. There are a lot of places, including M1, link is down below, the, the plus members in M1 get a 5.0 APY. That is right guys, you are incredibly higher than the national average of the 0.39 um, is the national average on a savings account. You're even much higher than a most institutions when it comes to traditional CDs. In addition, the money through there is FDIC insured. That is right. Giving you the peace of mind, the industry leading average rates. That way you don't have to move your cash because it is at that 5%. So how exactly does this work, guys? High yield savings accounts, when you deposit money into your financial institution, they're advertising a rate to attract customers. This is what we see in the promotions, the CD rates, the flyers, whatever you may be seeing out there right now for the higher rates. Thing is, larger banks have discovered that regardless of interest rates, consumers are very unlikely to lose or move money during any time. That is right, guys. Even when rates are very, very low or when rates are considerably high, most people will not move money just because I think one, being relatively uneducated, or two, just don't have the time or ambition to do it, or three, again, really just don't want the hassle of having money into different places. The difference between a high yield savings account is the money is not meant to be moved regularly. That is right, guys, a savings account is used as a traditional savings account, um, meaning that it does in earn interest a little bit different. Depending on the bank, interest may compound daily, monthly, quarterly, or annually. This is very important, guys. We've talked about that eighth wonder of the world, which of course is the compounding interest effect that we see. So if you have a 5% savings account that's compounding on a monthly basis, that is a very significant amount of money versus having a 5% um, savings account that compounds on a quarterly or an annually yield. But how do we calculate the APY in this? Before you sign up, guys, make sure you do your own research. It is very, very important. There are a ton of calculators out of there that look at different, um, different amounts that you're depositing, if you're putting more money in there, what the compounding is, if it's monthly, if it's daily, if it's annually, if it's you know weekly, whatever it may be, guys, there is a really, really good and a lot of good calculators out of there. A nerd wallet, bank rate, just a couple that I do use personally. Now looking at a 5.0 APY, if you put 25K in there, after one year, you have 16,125. That is right, guys. 
the account has made $1,125 at that 5% APY compounded monthly. So you made $1,000. Just thinking about that with 25K in there, again, that is a $1,000 bonus that you're getting over a $1,000 bonus every single year. Now bump that up to 50K, you're at 2250, which again, $2,000 a year. 100K, you're at 4450, that is right guys, $4,450 is gonna be your dividend yield after one single year. Even having 200 grand in there gives you nine per, or excuse me, $9,000 back on that. Now again, the way that I love to break this down um, personally is to really put it in perspective of your monthly bills. So if you have a $9,000 interest, even if you have you know $1,100 with a $25,000 deposit um, put into the account, what is that gonna pay for it? I, I think when people really put it into layman terms or you put it into you know monthly liabilities where if I have an investment and I'm making you know $70 a month, that $70 a month can cover my phone bill. That is one less expense that I have. I know we're not accounting for paying taxes on that money, but that is the way to ultimately look at it, guys, is what is it going to cover your expenses? Now, when you look at some of the accounts, such as what Chase Bank offers, they have a 0.01 APY on a basic savings account, which is very traditional among larger banks. Now, if you put money in there, um, they, they theor theoretically put $25 or $25,000 in there, contribute $200 a month, in the course of 20 years in that account, you earned, you guessed it, $98. If you're doing the math, guys, 25K deposited, 0 0.01 APY, which again, that is what we've seen um, for some of the basic accounts. Now, if you put that safe, same 25K, put in $200 every single month into the M1 account at 5%, 20 years later, you do not earn the $98. Like you've seen going and building that, you'll have $77,000. That is right, guys. Let me run through this scenario one more time. That is the difference of the compounding interest over time, guys. So if you have a 0 0.01 APY over 20 years, putting in 25K, $200 a month, you'll earn $98 in interest with a 5.0 APY. So again, you're talking a massive difference in the APY. Same amount contributed, 25K, $200 a month. Over 20 years, you have $77,000 in interest which is absolutely crazy. Now let's say you find a 1% interest rate higher, decide to move your money. The net difference, depending on the balance, is not gonna make a very big difference um, because of moving the money different institutions, the time, the effort, the money. Um, you can earn a little bit more interest, but that means you get more 1099s. Um, there's gonna be a lot of other things that you can really follow or what you do have to follow. So bottom line, guys, Personal finance is really up to you. I've said this from the beginning. I can provide you with the tools, but it is up to you to really pick it. Find a high yield savings account that keeps your money liquid, that is FDIC insured. Put it away, continue to kind of compile it in there. Right now, personally, not a financial advisor, but I would put the investment into the S&P 500. We've talked about that before. So it makes sense, guys, why rate chasing is not worth it. Um, just because there are better things out there not always worth it depending on where you're going all right guys so that'll do it for today's video let me know in the comments what you guys think and as always thank you guys for watching